Good afternoon. It's 5.30 p.m. We're going to go ahead and get started with our program today. Welcome to Southwire Solutions University. This is Virtual Training Live, and we're really glad you're able to join us. Uh, my name is Beth. As most of you know, I'm SSU Training Coordinator, and I'm your host today. So I'm glad to see you here today. And we are at the last one in our series called Where, When, Why, and How. And so today our focus is the simple 600 V calculator and your Southwire expert that's gonna tell you all about it is Mr. Joe Fawcett. Hi, thank you for joining us today. Today we're gonna to be talking about the simple 600 volt app-based calculator. It's available on our website, southwire.com. It's available for Android or iOS. And it can calculate and generate a number of things, you know, including voltage drop, the ground wire sizing, any ampacity adjustments you need to make, the conduit fill, what that conduit fill will be if we swapped it out for aluminum conductors. We'll pull the phase wire attributes from the data tables. We're really going to focus on attention and pressure today because that's what we're really concerned about. We'll also give you the real size that wire should come on, and it will help you generate some checklists to make sure you're not forgetting anything with your pulls. Uh, really looking at the traditional way of pulling versus the simple way, and, and the calculator is kind of the, the core element of this to help prepare you to be successful in a job. You know, we think of a traditional pull, we have all these reels, you know, you know, black wire on wooden reels, and then we need all those associated reel jacks, axles, material handling, in addition to all of the material you need to set up the heads. Uh, we go the simple way, we're trying to get all those wires paralleled on a reel, uh, we want to put heads on them. We can stack if we got multiple poles. Again, we're using that no loop wire, which is going to make those poles go much easier. All right, as we talk about the difference between the tablet and the phone based app, the tablet's just got bigger screen size, so it's going to give you your selection menu and the item you're working on is going to appear at once. Whereas in a phone based version, We'll give you your selection list and then you'll click something and it'll pull up the other screen that has that working screen for that function. So the poll we're going to be looking at today is, you know, the poll we use whenever we're doing these calculations just to be consistent. It's a 455 foot pole. It's got seven nineties in it. You know, it's a, it's a pretty heavy duty pole, four six hundreds plus a ground. Um, traditionally, most folks would look at this and they'd get to somewhere that fourth, fifth 90 and they'd throw a pull box in at a right angle there as the corner, replace a 90. Well, that forces you into pulling that wire out there and then refeeding it back in and we want to avoid that. Because of the simple wire, we can pull through all those 90s. So we want to arrange that pull box to be a straight through pull. But in order to do that, you need to take care of that at the planning phase. So we're going to open up our app here. Uh, that haven't put any projects in this, so we're going to click that press button at the top, and you'll notice I have a cursor showing as I move around here just to make it easier for you folks to track what's going on. You need to name the project. I'm just going to call this one training poll. It's going to default to whatever day you're doing this. You can put in dates you know, for your own use. We're also going to put in where this is going, what this poll is. So. You know, looking at the pole I'm starting, I'm going off, I'm going horizontal down, more horizontal, and then flying down. So maybe it looks like maybe I'm starting off in a first floor service room, and then I'm ending up maybe, you know, in a basement distribution. So you just type in those, you can name them whatever you want. You know, some folks will just put from A to B. Click Next, and it's going to make me enter some information in. So if I select that raceway, it's going to pull up a list at the bottom there that I can scroll through the different types of raceways. Here, we're just going to stick with the MT. So I'm going to click Done there. I can go for the raceway size. I can enter the raceway size, or I can just say Calculate, and it's going to do that based upon the code tables, you know, maintaining my proper fill. Then I go to select my wires. In this case, we're just using the simple copper THHN. We're going to use three phase wires, and that wire size, we're going to pull up that list and scroll down until you pick the 600, 600 thousands there. All right, here again, you know, we have the neutral, same size neutral, but, you know, if you had a different size neutral, super neutral, whatever, you could go ahead and enter that in here. Same THHN one conductor, and then I'm pulling out my wire size. 
and then I'll repeat that for the ground wire. Now we got one ground wire. A little later on, we'll show you that, you know, you can actually pull the ground wire size from the code table out of this app. Um, more often than not on jobs, those, those ground sizes are being spec'd out. They're usually larger than code would require, but that's what the job calls for, so you're putting it in. Now, right, once we have that, we're going to save that. You know, if I had to edit, edit that, I could, or delete that project, I could right there. Otherwise, I just select that line. In this case, it's going to list the poll. If I wanted to, I can add additional polls, but we're really just going to focus on the one today. But I'll just click that plus button. That would kind of pull up another entry window, my you know to from window there. I'm just going to cancel that out because we're just going to focus on this one poll for right now. So now if I just select the line that that poll is on, you can see it pulls up the list of all the different things I can do that we talked about before, right? You know, from voltage drop to my checklists. What we're really going to focus on at first here is calculating that tension and pressure, that pulling tension and sidewall pressure, because those are going to be the things that affect our pull. So you just click that plus button there, and now we're adding segments. And if you're following along on the screen to the right there, it's going to show you which segments we're entering. All right. The first thing is wires being pulled from. We can see we're going to pull that wire up. So I select that from the list and you enter the length and click save. Then I just add the next segment. Well, this one's going to be horizontal. Select that from the list, enter the length. You can notice that's putting in a 90 degree elbow, you know, as a standard radius. It just defaults to that. So unless you're doing something different, you'd also pick that wire info button if you ever had to change something with the wire. So now I'm adding segment three. That's going down for 20 feet. You can see it puts in a 90 degree slope there. Um, if you're doing something different, that's where you would change that. And I have a bunch of horizontals here. So I got 40 feet horizontal. I go to my next segment. I got that 180 feet at the horizontal. I got that six segment, which is 15 feet on a horizontal. And the segments, they include like the length, the straight length, and it also takes into account the, the conduit going around that bend. I got my last horizontal segment there for 40 feet. And that's throwing me a warning. I'm going to just disregard that for the moment, and we'll look that up once we get to the whole table. We'll enter that last pole segment, which is going to go down. So I just select that again from that list. It throws in that it's a 90 degree angle there, slope. It's vertical, right? And I add in that 20 foot segment. Again, it's, it's throwing me another warning here, so now I'm going to start to really investigate what these warnings are all about. So once I click that button, it will show me the list of segments. And this is really the difference between the, you know, our computer-based one and the app-based one is the computer-based one, you can see everything all at once here and on, a, on the app, you need to do a little bit more scrolling. So I'm just scrolling through my list, and the left-hand side is my tensions. I don't see anything really alarming there. You know, I think I think it said my phase conductors could handle 4,800 pounds of tension. Um, but that sidewall pressure there, I don't want to exceed 1,000 pounds of sidewall pressure. And if I didn't do this calculation, I would cause a problem. So I'm going to go and look at how I can change this. Well, a fairly standard way to minimize that sidewall pressure is by changing to a, a larger radius elbow. So instead of a standard radius, I'm just going to choose a 36-inch radius here, and that's, you know, most distributors will stock those in the larger conduit sizes. And I'm going to click Save and, and see what effect that had. So I'll go back to my list. I'll scroll down. And just by changing that, you can see that it, it almost halved that sidewall pressure. Now I'm down about 670 pounds. 
but I still have that on line six down, that segment six. So I'm going to go through and see what happens if I change that radius elbow. All right. By doing this prior to the pull, one is we're avoiding damage on the wire, but two is we can really be cognizant of where we're in these radius elbows. They cost more. There's a little bit more work involved in supporting them. We don't want to just put them everywhere, which is kind of a lot of folks would default like if this is going to be hard pull, oh, just use sweeps everywhere. Right, we don't want to do that. We want to put them where we need it. And we can see just by putting those two sweeps in, my continuous tension is below where I need it to be. And now my sidewall pressure, I'm less than a thousand pounds, so I'm good. All right, at the top there, it's kind of suggesting rope size, clevis, and give me some data on the pullers. That share button right there, that's going to allow me to send a summary. I can email it. I can airdrop it. I can text it to somebody. It's basically just creating a little PDF file. So I'll just show you that. I have my kind of information covered up there. All right, but you can see just here it's text in the PDF. It will tell you that it's been successful. And I'll just pull up that PDF here to see what it looks like. All right, so it gives you the summary. It tells you kind of the specs of the poll. Um, which way the wire is going, and it will give you that maximum tension and a maximum sidewall pressure, which are really the things we're concerned about. We'll tell you some of the data on the pullers there so you can make appropriate choices. All right, so now we're going to look at some of the other functions. The first one's voltage drop. You can either, it will give you a choice. We're going to calculate the voltage drop based on the wire size. You can also calculate the wire size based on your voltage drop. We need to enter in the circuit length, and it will calculate that based upon the amperage. That's for three phase, and it's just pulling that out of the code tables and making sure we're matching. Um, we can go to single phase. I'm just selecting out there to show you we can do it. We're not actually going to do that here because this is obviously a three phase pull. All right, you can also see what happens. What happens if I'm changing that amperage there, right? Because that does make a difference on your voltage drop. So this kind of gives you the opportunity to do some what if scenarios, and you can kind of see what that voltage drop is, and also you know, which will give you the result in volts of load. We talked about doing ground wire sizes, so we can select our, our ranges of amperage here, and it will pull that ground wire size based upon a code table. Again, more often than not on jobs, the ground wire is being specced out by the engineers, and it's usually sized larger than it needs to be according to the code. And passy adjustments, well, what happens, you know, maybe I'm doing parallel sets in a in a conduit run, um, and I'm going to have more more current carrying conductors. I need to make those adjustments so I can select how many current carrying conductors I have in a conduit, and it will then tell me what my amp passy adjustment is for that wire size. So again, just kind of playing around with it here so you can see the difference. All right, conduit fill. Well, before we had it say it was going to calculate the conduit size. Based upon those wires I'm pulling, I'm going to use a three and a half inch conduit and I'll be at a little about 32% full. All right, but I can also look at, well, what happens if I replace those wires with the appropriate size aluminum conductors? What does that do to my conduit fill? Well, I can still fit those aluminum sizes in there and not exceed my, my conduit fill requirements. The phase wire attributes, this is really just the data, you know, the weight, the dimensions, the maximum pulling tension, sidewall pressure, real length, coefficient of friction. Just all that data, you know, we make the wires so we know what all those specs are. So it's giving you a real easy way to access those. Tension pressure, that's where we were. Wheel size. Well, once I put in a length, I just need to put it in for one of the, you know, on a phase wire and a will autofill for the neutral on the ground. It's going to tell me the weight of that reel, what size that reel is. Also has a selection for these frames and jacks. Well, that's going to give me a list of both frames and jacks we sell and whether or not they can handle that reel. Right, so it gives you simple yes, no. You can select on a particular one. It'll give you an image so you know what we're talking about. It'll give you the data specs on that. You know, that was the A frame. If we look at a quick jacks, it's just going to give you a picture. It'll give you the, the weight rating and the size reel it can handle and just more information about that just to make your life easier as you're choosing to do things. And you can see that reel is 4,400 pounds. Well, that's good information if I need to know how I'm getting that reel on and off the job.
And then kind of the last functions in it here are these either a feeder wire or a branch wire checklist. Basically, you just scroll down this list. It helps jog your memory, make sure you're not forgetting anything. Right. Oh, do I need a clip? What size clevis do I need? Oh, make sure I have those Allen wrenches because those always get forgotten when we have a clevis. Um, which wire puller do I want to make sure on the job? Do I need to have spare parts? Do I have my conduit adapter? Right, well, I'm going to have to plug this thing in unless I'm using a bat, the 3K bat. So what kind of size extension cord do I need? And, you know, it shouldn't be longer than a certain length based upon the size. Oh, I want those triggers for safety, so let's make sure we put those on a checklist. How did I order this wire out? Did I order the colors? Did I order a parallel set? Um, did that parallel include the ground, or did I do it separate? Did I pay to have the heads installed so we're not making those up in the field and risking injury? All right. Did I stack those conductors on a more than one pole on a reel? How am I handling that? So am I using A-frames? Uh, am I using a sim reel? Am I using ProJax, Quick Jacks? Do I need a cable guide system to help me out? If I didn't pay for the heads, am I using reusable grips? I'll also give you a spot there to enter uh, estimated install time and number of people and, and also the actual. Right, and then I can click that share button and send that list out to my field folks. All right, we'd like to thank you for joining us today. That was just a real quick overview of how to use this app. Um, we, we always encourage you to do this before you pull. And we also encourage you to reach out to our folks, you know, our agents, our distributors, our field folks, you know, our, our contractor equipment specialists, our contractor solution specialists, to really take a look at your job because, you know, there are a lot of similarities between jobs, but each job in itself is kind of unique and we want to help you get there so you can be successful in blowing your wire. Once again, thank you and have a good day. All right, so checking in, it doesn't look like I've seen any questions pop up in the chat. We'll give a minute or two for any questions to come in. Again, when we talk about these, these planning tools, you know, we had the session earlier today on the cable pole calculator, the spreadsheet-based version of this. Uh, we just looked at the app-based version of this. Really, the, the power of these is, is kind of taking a couple minutes before, before you even really order the wire out to make sure you're planning your poles properly and, and thinking about what you're going to be doing on a job. Um, and those couple minutes you spend up front are going are gonna to potentially save you hours or even days down, down the line towards when it gets time to pull that wire. The other thing is, you know, there's plenty of jobs going on where they're not doing these calculations. You know, if we looked at that particular poll, um, before we put in the sweep elbows, you know, our maximum tension was still only like less than 3,000 pounds. So we could pull that easily without ever realizing, you know, we're damaging those conductors due to the, the excessive sidewall pressure until we change those over to sweeps. Uh, lots, lots of conductors probably getting pulled on jobs where people didn't do these calculations that inherently were doing some damage to those conductors and not even realizing that um, and the problem might not turn up for years, you know, years down the road. So that, that's the reason why we want to do these calculations. Like I said, we have, we're here to help. We've got our uh, contractor specialists, we've got our equipment specialists. These, these folks are all here to help you out on your job. So we ask you to reach out. And I still don't see any questions, Beth, so we're going to go ahead and wrap this up.